So hello and assalamualaikum to Doctor and also to everyone else. So today uh, I will be uh, on behalf of my group, I will be presenting for our CDNA microarray PBL. So our group member consists of Muhammad Adam bin Bakri, Nur Amira Wanida binti Asman, Farahia binti Muhammad Saleh, Nur Shahira binti Johari, Shan Mukapriya Saravanan, and also me myself, Muhammad Alif bin Ismail. So the first thing that we'll do is to understand what is CDNA microarray. So basically, this is a hard throughput highly parallel RNA expression assay techniques that permits quantitative analysis of RNAs transcribed from both known and also unknown gene. Yeah, so the first que the question that is in the PBL is to explain the experiment and steps involved with the flowchart and how to confirm the gene that is really involved in the production of vaccines. And the second one is to consider what kind of detection method that we will use and uh, what differences between results obtained by quantitative real-time PCR and also the normal PCR. So the first one, uh, the first question will be to the step involved. So basically what we need to do is to collect the tissue sample from Texas Brevifora. After that, we put the samples into two different tubes and then we treat one of them with uh, methyl jasmonate and the other sample we act as a control, which means that we are not treating them with methyl jasmonate so that when we are getting the result, we know how to distinguish between those that have, uh, those who are having the tussles genes and those who didn't. Yeah. And then after that, we add organic solvent in both tubes to extract the RNA from both tissue sample. So it's to make sure that we isolate the RNA. And then after that, we mix the tissue samples on the vertex. And then we'll collect the upper part of the solution uh, using a micro pipette and transfer it into a clean tube. After that, we wash the RNA samples over a column uh, filled with small bits that uh, bind to RNA that have polyethyl because we are, that the CDNA that we have have uh, polyethyl, other molecule will be washed away so that we can further isolate the mRNA. And then we can wash uh, the buff with a buffer solution over the columns to make sure that we detach the mRNA from the bees. And then we add labeling meats to the samples, read for the RNA from bud cells treated with metal jasmonate, and green for RNA from bud cells that are not treated with metal jasmonate. And then after that, we conduct reverse transcription PCR to produce cDNA. After that, we pipette the cDNA from the treated and non-treated bud cells to the microarray. We wash the unhybridized CDNA using a washing solution, and then we analyze the result. So the next question is how to confirm. So basically, uh, by treating the butt tissue of passes for every folia with metal jasmonate and another one uh, without metal jasmonate, we can actually identify these genes that are involved in taxol's production. Because if the sample is treated with metal jasmonate, genes responsible for the production of taxol will increase its production. And then we can use this microarray technique, we can compare the gene expressed in tissue treated with methyl jasmonate and genes that are not treated with methyl jasmonate. The genes that are potentially involved in the production of taxo will be in orange color because both CDNA from each sample, green and red, that is involved in taxo production will also overlap. So meaning that the green color might be a gene from Texas barifolio that is not involved in taxo production. The, we can confirm that those genes are involved in the production of that cell by other traditional method uh, expression techniques such as PCR, notable blood analysis, and RNA protection assays. For example, we can use qPCR that are used for validation tool for confirming gene expression results we obtain from the microarray analysis. Uh, the next second is what is the step involved in qPCR? So the first one, we, we need to isolate three candidate genes that are identified as a precursor to textile production from the microarray techniques. After that, we design a suitable primer to amplify each template. We conduct qPCR by adding tag or even PFU polymerase, the NTP's uh, specific primer and tagman probe. And next, we conduct thermal cycling for DNA amplification by heating and cooling process to make sure that uh, this normal PCR reaction happen, which is denaturation, annealing, and extension happen. And then after that, we'll do a PICON analysis. And PICON is the mRNA uh, that, and PICON is the product of our DNA amplification. Yeah, and last question is, what is the method to quantify expression? The method that we use is probe-based uh, method, which is probes are fluorescent-labeled DNA oligonucleotide, and the probe that we choose is statement probe 
which consists of fluorescent molecules, a small segment of DNA, and also a quencher. Tamen Pro is suitable for QPCR as they are different from normal primer because they cannot be extended by TA uh, polymerase due to the lack of 3OH group. So it's easier to, for us to use this uh, Tamen Pro. In a probe-based method, it is only possible to get signal when the primers and the probe bind in the correct place to the correct target. So we don't need to run any post-run analysis in order to confirm the correct target has been amplified. This means that the data that we get is reliable and is very simple to work with. So the next question is the comparison between PCR and SOQPCR. The results obtained is the result by QPCR uh, like we can see that real-time PCR detects the accumulation of amplicon during the reaction, and the data is then measured at the exponential phase of the PCR reaction. While normal PCR, they use methods of agarose gels or other PCR reduction methods, which are not as precise as what we get. And the second one is Q real-time PCR and PCR comparison is that the result is more accurate and it requires less time than PCR results because uh, QRT PCR result can be observed during the processor cell time where we can actually monitor the implication as the reaction progresses compared to normal PCR results that can only be analyzed after the runtime. So I think that is all from our group. Thank you very much.